Manchester United secured a crucial victory before the international break against Brentford and the United Twins need to speak about it. Blessings to everybody inside, including yourself, Cappy. First and foremost, what a way to win a game after two home losses on the bounce. It was important that we ended this small section of the season before the international break with a victory. Needed. And we just about did. Now, I may have been seen as extremely negative post-match because to me, that was a horrible performance. It was not a good performance at all by Manchester United and we were much more in control of our destiny in this game because once Brentford opened the scoring courtesy of Matthias Jensen or maybe even more so in the second half the away side looked to protect their lead by soaking up pressure and remaining as organized as possible in defensive areas that eliminates the high pressing we saw from them at the beginning of the game which means players have more time and space to make those crucial decisions I just didn't believe that we played with enough poise for almost the entirety of the fixture and maybe that has something to do with us struggling against well-organized machines maybe. but even then a lack of intensity in our passing not a lot of forward movement to drag defenders out of position even the patterns of play weren't established in my opinion almost like a freestyle and it can be very tough to watch at times so What's the saving grace, you may ask? I hear a lot about the injuries we have amassed and that could be more with Rafael Varane being out of the squad for this game, even though his issue was described as minor. And even Victor Lindelof walked down the tunnel once being substituted for Anthony Martial. A lot of injuries have been sustained in defensive positions. Some absentees in the midfield and up front as well. Mm. Some players have also struggled for form potentially fatigued due to the insanity of, of last year's scheduling. You could even say the last few years of scheduling when you look at it, fixture congestion is running wild. And the BBC put out a story that I'm literally looking at right now that had uh, Bruno Fernandes as the head figure of the story, basically saying he's played the most minutes in a, in a year span, 15th of September 22 to 23 this year. And he's played 6,666 minutes, 72 games, for club and country and there was a little study by a company analyzing some players at the elite level and how that could be affecting them physically and mentally due to the high demands of every single fixture think about it players are coming they're playing multiple minutes especially the the ones that are in the team sheet every single week playing a lot of minutes week in week out for their club and then they have to go during these international breaks which is why i'm not a big fan of international breaks these days because they've implemented so much unnecessary competitions that demands the players once again to play more minutes we've got the champions league increasing the number of games next uh, season as well so all of these uh governing bodies uefa uh, fifa even the premier league to a certain extent of course they are part of that but still all of these governing bodies are not making it easier for the players to get sustained rest, the rest that they potentially need to get back to a level mentally and physically where they can perform at a high level week in, week out. The question I will ask to the audience now is, do you believe that things will significantly improve with, with everything that I've just said when we have the availability and time to work in that environment with little to no disturbances, if allowed to? It is going to be very difficult and you can see where Manchester United have had their struggles so far this season with a lack of availability oh, once again, especially in defensive areas. But what do you guys in the comments think? Now, I'm not going to lie, CM. I shared the same sentiment as you in regards to the game for 92 minutes. <laughs> but from the moment Scott McTominay scored twice, I jumped for joy. In fact, I was looking up to the heavens. All right. Because hear me out. I recognize this script. I've seen it. And the trajectory we are heading in only fits in with the current timeline of disappointments and failure. After everything we've seen in this last decade, everything we've learned, 
some things that seem like simple solutions only end up creating complex issues. So when I look at a second season so far that has been filled with in-house disputes being made public, the board making untimely decisions to the disgusting confusion of the fan base. A summer transfer window that started with promise and ended with a what if type beat. I could keep on going. The most losses in our first 10 competitive games since 1986. Do I need to continue? Summing that all up, what I'm trying to say is that sometimes when you're this deep on the water, you might not have the technique to mind but all that matters is how you find a way to reach back to shore safe and sound get back to the top <laughs> can't say manchester united have been untouched far from that in fact but hopefully this international break will be an opportunity to press reset a chance to take the confidence of this victory and move forward easier said than done yeah. but somehow this team, these players, and the manager will need to generate some momentum if they want to rise back up the league table. If they want to maintain their status within Europe's elite, i.e. the champions! Holding notes, and of course, any cup competition that comes their way. You know, ladies and gentlemen, CM, sometimes moments like this can transform the complexion of a season and even McTominay's comments after the game was an example of how important those two goals were once again in the moment because fine margins are a real thing you know imagine you, you you take away those two goals think about the feeling think about how me and you would have come into this recording session speaking about manchester united the state of the team the state of the club and everything those things haven't disappeared don't get me wrong they have not disappeared uh, but at least on mm. pitch you can be happy you can be slightly positive about the way that game ended why because it was translated into three points rather than one or zero CTC News. Welcome to CTC News, where I will be looking at some of the latest, greatest, and not so greatest news around the ends of Manchester United. So let's look into today's first story. Manchester United fans gathered outside of the ticketing offices at Old Trafford to protest against the Glazer ownership amid news of Sir Jim Ratcliffe's plans to purchase a 25% stake of the club while allowing the disliked owners of 18 years to remain until 2026. This protest was organised by fan group The 1958 as they continue to question the integrity or lack thereof when it comes to Abram and Joel Glazer's manipulation of match-going supporters. Man United's women's side were involved in an eventful 2-2 draw in their first WSL home game of the season. Leah Galton capitalised on a mistake by Arsenal goalkeeper Sabrina D'Angelo to level the game at one apiece after 27 minutes. And late in the second half, debutante and French international Melvin Mallard gave the Red Devils a lead that unfortunately didn't win the game due to a spectacular equaliser from Chloe Lacasse. Mark Skinner's side now head into an important Champions League qualifying game on Tuesday against Paris Saint-Germain with the first leg being at home. The return fixture takes place on the 18th of this month and in between, MESC will be facing last season's 10th place side in Leicester City on Sunday. And now, a light CTC injury report. Lissandro Martinez remains out with a reoccurrence of his metatarsal injury first suffered in April of this year against Sevilla. It was confirmed by manager Ellington Haag that the Argentinian centre-back was due to undergo surgery which could keep him out until December. Adam Wan-Bissaka sustained a hamstring injury against Brighton on the 16th of September that has already kept him out for almost a month. No update on him just yet. 
Left backs, Luke Shaw, Terrell Malassia and Sergio Reguilón all remain out injured. Shaw has been out now since mid to late August with a muscle injury. Malassia has yet to feature at all this campaign and Loni Reguilón seems to be suffering from a hamstring injury but may return after the international break. Other absentees include Kobe Mainu, who has started training again recently, Ahmad Diallo, who sustained a knee injury in pre-season, Rafael Varane was not included in the squad against Brentford, but his issue is reported as minor. We will see. Victor Lindelof was also seen going straight down the tunnel after being substituted in United's 2-1 victory on Saturday. No news about that just yet. So Alex Ferguson's beloved wife, Lady Kathy Ferguson, has died at the age of 84. The sad news was revealed in a Ferguson family statement on October 6th. Lady Kathy and Sir Alex had been married for 57 years, and she reportedly played a pivotal role in him not retiring in 2002. Behind a successful man, there's an even stronger woman, and we here at CM22 ENT would like to send out blessings to the Ferguson family in these tough times. This 22's view segment is for you to voice your opinion any opinion regarding Manchester United. So get in the comments, YouTube community tab, Twitter, Instagram, and let us know what you think for a chance to feature in these videos. Blessings to Super Nick as always saying, I'm still trying to understand why it took a McTominay cameo for the team to show some urgency. And don't even get me started with the financial man of the match. Well, I'm gonna leave the last part for you guys to, to discuss in the comments because it seemed to be very controversial topic after the game but on the first point of course it is a cause for concern that it took us so late to show a level of urgency once we saw the goal we should be motivated from the offing we should be able to find that motivation from the offing to, to show a level of urgency and a need and want and desire to win games to score goals to make sure that we're executing the game plan to the best of our abilities and right now that is not happening on a consistent basis so not just on the pitch tactically things need to be tweaked of course but also mentally there needs to be a switch in a lot of these players and i don't know if we can find that no that i would have to see it to believe it because i don't think a lot of these players are capable of, of flicking that switch consistently enough to be able to win games and, and to go on runs and, and to beat a competitive side competing for leagues titles and championships in general on a consistent basis what do you guys think about that in the comments shout out to paxton saying project mcsource back up and running again <laughs> and you have to give credit where credit is due to scott mctominay and to eric ten Hag for making a substitution this is a guy that I'm sure myself, CM and a lot of Manchester United fans have said he's not good enough to be a week in week out starter at the level we want to be at and of course that is forward thinking but still we those are the words that a lot of people have uttered even in this moment we want better for a midfield for our whole side there needs to be quality all around the pitch to elevate yourself and, and get closer to the, the opposition that we should be going up against we all know who that should be but he could have left in the summer. He hasn't seen a lot of game time and Eric Ten Hag has kind of implemented him in a way where if you need an option off the bench late in games, we're going to bring you on and see what you can do for the most part, for the most part. And he delivered against Brentford. There was one guy who needed, needed a result. It was Eric Ten Hag. And potentially you could even say the players yeah. needed a result to, to give them a sense of belief going into that international break and coming back because there's some difficult fixtures that are going to be taking place after the international break. So those two goals were crucial and you have to give credit to Scott McTominay. A few weeks ago, CM put out a short speaking about his international form and how potentially Eric Ten Hag in United could get him to translate that form in a United shirt. 
And maybe this is a way of doing so, implementing, getting him high up the pitch in late game scenarios so we can take advantage of his finishing inside and outside the area of what we've seen in the past because we have seen it in the past just not on a consistent basis. The international break now looms a little two week gap not a lot of break for the players if you know you know from earlier in the episode nonetheless on our return there will be a newly promoted side in Sheffield United on the 21st at Bramall Lane who are yet to get their first victory on their return to the top flight seven losses and one draw stuck in 20 if mm, place mm. so ladies and gentlemen first and foremost Tell us what you thought of the Brentford game overall in the comments and how you're feeling going into the Sheffield United game and onwards. Also, have your say on everything CTC reported in his new segment, including the Glazers Out protest. Man United women starting off their season with a win and a draw so far and going into a very important game against PSG tomorrow. Good luck to each and every one of them. Hopefully they get the victory in that first leg. And also, we would like to reciprocate what he did at the end of his segment and just say rest in peace to Lady Kathy Ferguson. Prayers and blessings to the entire Ferguson family at this tough time. <laughs> 